The African Guards of Garvey, the AGG, the African Guards of Garvey will roll up on you like the cops, pull out their book and say, Miss, have you paid your weave tax this year? Have you paid your weave tax this year? And the longer the weave, the more the tax. Four inches, that might be $400. 40 inches, that might be $4,000. What I want to talk about on this video is I want to talk about some things that I would do, some things that I would do if I were president of black America, okay? And I do think that at some point, we're going to need to get organized enough where we actually have campaigns and candidates to be president of black America. There needs to be a governing body for how we behave as a people and for our agendas and goals as a people because we're the only people in this country that does not have a central governing body that determines what we should be doing as it relates to our best interests as a, as a people. So I'm going to begin, okay? I'm going to begin. The very first thing, the very first thing that I would do if I was president of black America is I would require all black fraternities, all black sororities, all black Masonic organizations, all black professional organizations, all black community-based organizations, all black national organizations, whether it's the Urban League, whether it's the NAACP, whether it's the Nation of Islam, whether it's the Kappas or the Alphas or the Zetas or the uh, Sigma Gamma Rose, whether it's the Stop the Violence Movement, whether it's black doctors, black psychologists, black teachers, black engineers, Whenever, whenever there is a conference to be held, whenever there is a conference to be held, all black organizations, all of them, are required to hold their conference at a historically black college or university. Let me say it again. If you're holding a conference, your fraternity, your sorority, your professional organization, your community organization, the black pharmacists, the black social workers, the black lawyers, if you're going to bring our people together for a specific purpose of improving our situation, we should be making sure that all the money, that all the money from that conference goes back into the black community. We have over 100 historically black colleges in this country that are being threatened with closure, that are being threatened with extinction because they're not getting the financial support that they need from the black community. So as president of black America, Dr. Umar Ifatunde will require, will require that all black organizations hold your conferences at black colleges. Why? Do you know how much money the fraternities and sororities spend at their conference? They dump five, 10, 15 million dollars in a weekend, do you know how much money the black professional organizations, the Masonic Lodges, the NAACP and Urban League, do you know how much money they spend when they have their conferences at the Sheraton and at the Hyatt and at the Marriott and at all these white hotels that have very little black managerial staff? They dump anywhere from 10, 20, I've even seen estimates of $50 million between the housing, transportation, food, lodging, entertainment. Why are we giving other people who don't like us an economic stimulus package every time we claim to be coming together for the best interest of our people? Let me say it again. If you're coming together to help black people, how could your spending not be included in that equation? Don't tell me we're coming together as ASCAP. Don't tell me we're coming together as the Garvey movement. Don't tell me we're coming together as any organization. And I'm just saying those organizations because there's organizations that I respect, okay? So I'm not labeling them out. This is just random names of organizations. I respect ASCAP. I was presented at multiple conferences, so no issue. I'm just throwing out proper little organizations. I could say New Black Panther Party because I respect them. So any black organization that's having a conference, you must have it at an HBCU. There's nothing you're getting at Sheraton. There's nothing you're getting at the Marriott. There's nothing you're getting at the Westin that you cannot get at an HBCU. They have the dormitories. 
Now, granted, the room ain't going to be beautiful, but it doesn't have to be. The room ain't going to be beautiful, but it doesn't have to be. I remember the first time I went to a conference as a student at Millersville University. The first time. You know where my first conference was? Student Leadership Conference at Cheney University. Student Leadership Conference at Cheney University. And we stayed in the Cheney University dorms and we were told, we were told that we had to bring our own bedding to the dormitory. Guess what? We didn't have no problem with that. So what? Cheney University said, bring your own pillows, bring your own sheets, bring your own blankets. We have the rooms, but we need you to bring your own linen because we can't afford for you guys to, you know, damage the linen or take it with you by accident or whatever. We didn't have no problem with that. We packed up our sheets and our blankets and our pillows from Millersville University. There was about a dozen or two of us and we went to Cheney and that was one of the best conferences I ever had in my life at Cheney University, the first black institution of higher learning. Shout out to Cheney University. So y'all can do the same thing. If you care about black people, if you say we're coming together to do a better job as black lawyers, we're coming together to do a better job as a black fraternity, we're coming together to do a better job as a black sorority, we're coming together to talk about what the Urban League needs to do or what the Congressional Black Caucus needs to do or what the NAACP needs to do. Why in the hell are you, that's hypocritical. You are a hypocrite to say you care about black folks and you're holding a conference to determine how we can solve the problems of black folks. But while we're at this conference, we're going to put $20 million into white folks. While we're at this conference, we're going to put $20 million into European Jews. While we're at this conference, we're going to put $20 million into Arabs and East. It's a contradiction. If there's one thing that black people need, we need organized economic power. We need organized economic power. You don't give your economic power to another people and claim you helping us. And then guess what they say at the conference? We got to do some fundraising. Why in the hell do you have to do some fundraising? You just did the fundraising for white folks. You just dumped $50 million, $10 million, $20 million into a white hotel. And you got the nerve to say, do we have any fundraising ideas? This was a fundraiser if you would have done it at an HBCU. So as president of black America, no black organization that claims to be black will ever again have a conference at a white hotel. If you want a swimming pool, guess what? You better build one at the black college. Facts. You want a swimming pool? Guess what? If that black college gets your $10 million this year, when you come back for next year's conference, how much you bet they will have the swimming pool? How much you bet they will even have built a conference center on their campus? First of all, we have colleges that have conference centers. Tuskegee Institute has a conference center. OK, certain colleges, I think Howard has a conference center or at least Howard used to have the Howard University Hotel. I know because I stayed there as a freshman. OK, as a freshman, I went to my first black consciousness conference at Howard University. That's where I met Dr. Ben for the first time, Malik Zulu Shabazz for the first time, Sister Soja for the first time. I met everybody for the first time and I stayed at Howard University Hotel. And if Howard University Hotel isn't there anymore, the only reason why it's not there is because the black organizations keep on taking your conference money to white hotels. If we invest in the historically black colleges, if we invest in the historically black colleges, they will be able to transform the campus from what it looks like now to what it needs to look like later. Do you understand me? Do you understand me? So that's the first thing I'm going to do as president of black America. Second thing, if you are a scholar or a teacher, scholar, you have a formal PhD. Teacher, you're self-educated. Scholar, you have a formal doctorate degree. Teacher, you're self-educated. No disrespect to the teachers because we need them too. Some of our greatest minds were self-educated, okay? Those are the teachers. I'm a scholar. I have a formal degree. Okay, you are not allowed to give out any lectures for which you charge money. You are not allowed to produce any DVDs for which you charge money. You are not allowed to publish any books for which you charge money. You are not allowed to recoup any type of financial remuneration 
for your service as a black scholar or teacher if you do not belong to an organization that is doing practical work in the black community. Facts. That organization cannot just be ideological. It must be practical. In other words, you might say, I belong to a think tank. That's not enough. You might say, I belong to an organization that's coming up with different ideas, or we come together and we discuss things. I'm not talking about intellectual masturbation movements. I'm not talking about intellectual masturbation movements. If you are getting money from books, DVDs, lectures, or anything else you're doing, you better be part of an organization that is actually doing some real work like the National Independent Black Parent Association. And if you are not part of an organization, be you an elder or a youth, you will be branded as an intellectual con artist and you will never allow be allowed to give another speech anywhere in black America. Facts. Facts. Third thing, three, as president of black America, I'm going to require that every black child who is currently in special education in these United States, and we have over two million, every black child who is currently in special education in the United States, they must be reevaluated. They must be reevaluated. And if we find out upon reevaluation that they were misdiagnosed as retarded, learning disabled, emotionally disturbed, ADHD, conduct disorder, if we find out that they should have never been in special ed, if we find out that the only mistake that was done was against them, and that is having never been taught in the first place, guess what? The principal will be fired. The teacher will be fired. The school psychologist will be fired. The special ed liaison will be fired. And the parents will be fined one half month's pay for letting your child get thrown in special ed jail to expedite the school to prison pipeline process. Under black America, under my presidency, if I catch any black kids being in special ed because of lazy ass white teachers or lazy ass black teachers or lazy ass mothers and lazy ass fathers, then guess what? They're going to lose their job and you will lose one half month's pay. That'll get your attention. All behavior is a function of the context where it happens and the consequences that follow. The context of where it happens and the consequences that follow. The next executive order that President Ifa Tunde will sign. The next executive order that President Ifa Tunde will sign. All ex-offenders, all ex-offenders who come out of jail, okay, all of them, okay, if they haven't gotten into any more legal trouble for two years, their record will be temporarily expunged after 24 months. Keep your nose clean, 24 months, their record will be temporarily expunged. After five years of no incidents, after five years of no incidents, permanent expulsion of prison record Facts, because I'm tired of black men and black women being held back from getting a second chance at life in this racist country because of mistakes that they may have made 10, 20, 30 years ago. It is absolutely unacceptable and unjustifiable to continue to punish black folks after they've already paid a debt to a society that they never should have paid. Can somebody answer a question for me? Can you answer a question for me? Why are we paying debts to society when the society never paid a debt to us for 400 years of enslavement? How dare you tell a black man or black woman that you have to pay a debt to society when the society never paid a debt to us for what we've been through? Facts. Two years, temporary expungement. Five years, permanent expungement. The only exceptions to that is pedophilia, Sex crimes, murder. Murder has to be viewed on a case-by-case -case basis in case the person accused of the murder alleges that it was self-defense, but for pedophilia and rape, you stay your ass in jail for the rest of your life. That's number four. Number five. 
any black man who is not married must pay and single males tax. There will be a tax for single black males that will be paid until you become a husband. That's right, it will be a tax. I haven't worked out how much you're gonna pay for being unmarried, but there will be a singles tax for black males that we have to pay. That's right, fellas, a tax. And for married families, there will be a significant tax credit on their returns. If you are a married black family, you will get significant, significant benefits that come to come to you. Not only in forms of taxing, when you go to buy a house, we will help you buy your house if you are officially married. And I'm not talking about white man's marriage to City Hall. I'm talking about a marriage to the black community that was publicly officiated over by the Council of Elders. We're going to create a Council of Elders and the Council of Elders job is to oversee any conflicts in the black community, any issues, any drama, any war, any slander, any problem we got, we don't call the police no more. We don't call the judge no more. We don't call the lawyers no more. We go to the council of elders. I say council of elders. I got some Negroes in my family who have been misrepresenting me, claiming that I'm not a blood relative of Frederick Douglass. They have slandered me. They have made videos. I would like to present my evidence showing that I am, and I would like them to face sanctions for their crime. And elders, I have people in the black community who have claimed that I've been stealing the money for the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. I want to show you the books for the fundraiser, and I want to show you the official bank statements from the bank so you can see that not a single penny has ever been withdrawn from this account, and I want the Negroes locked up. I got Negroes, elders, who say I don't have a doctorate degree from the Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine. I want to bring my degree and I want to bring my curriculum vitae and I want to bring you a printout of my coursework and I want the Negroes to face consequences. Anything done against black people will be overseen by the Council of Elders and they will provide the due process and they will provide the appropriate consequence. Facts. Facts. And then, so, single black men will have to pay a tax for being single. There will be credits and other programs for families who are married. Black women, I love you sisters, but guess what? You have to pay a weave tax. Yes, black women will have to pay a weave tax. Black men will have to pay a singles tax. And why am I charging black women a tax for wearing weave. You know why? Because you are giving Koreans $9 billion a year. You are giving Koreans $9 billion a year. You know what we can do with $9 billion? You know how many hospitals and schools and factories and gas stations and airplanes and land that we can buy and build with $9 billion? I can't stop you from wearing the weave, but you will be given a, a tax. The police, the black police, the African guards of Garvey, the AGG, the African guards of Garvey will roll up on you like the cops, pull out their book and say, Miss, have you paid your weave tax this year? Have you paid your weave tax this year? And the longer the weave, the more the tax. Four inches, that might be $400. 40 inches, that might be $4,000. Black men, why do you have to pay a singles tax? Because too many of us have become serial monogamous and we gotta settle down. The average age at which a black man gets married is getting older and older. And we gotta do something about that because we're not laying an adequate foundation for our sons, myself included, I'm guilty, right? But I'm gonna handle mine, trust me, FDMG is coming, right? So, fellas, you have to pay that tax because we need you to understand how seriously important it is for you to settle down with your queen, not just to build family, which is extremely important, but also to show the example so more families can be built off of the example that your family sets, my brothers. So there will be a singles tax for black men. There will be a weave tax for black women. Okay. Also, if you're married to somebody outside of the community, you're going to pay a very high tax. The interracial marriage tax will be one of the highest taxes in our community. If you want to run around flaunting white women in front of black children, if you want to run around
flaunting white women in front of black children, you're going to pay a very high tax for that. In fact, every time you shop, you're going to have to pay your tax. Okay? So the interracial marriage tax is very, very high. Okay? Also, for black folks who move out of the neighborhood, move into the suburbs, you live in an all-white neighborhood because you want to get it ready from black folks, you will have to pay, okay, a tax for running away from the black community. I mean, let's look at it. Why do black girls not have role models? Why do black boys not have role models where they live? Because it ain't none around. Little Wayne is a role model because the dentist is not there. Do you understand me? Do you want, and I'm not picking on Little Wayne. I'm just throwing some names out there. No disrespect, my brother. Okay? Nicki Minaj is a role model because the female principals don't live in the hood. Nicki Minaj is the role model because the female doctors and lawyers have ran out. The reason why LeBron James is a role model is because the doctors and the psychologists have moved out the neighborhood. If we still lived in the neighborhood, the black celebrities would not be the role models. The professionals would be. Facts. Let me say it again. If we stop running away from our people after we get an education, black celebrities would no longer be the role models. Black professionals would be. That's how it used to be before desegregation. When W.E.B. Du Bois came to Philadelphia to work as a professor while he wrote The Philadelphia Negro, he still had to live in the ghetto. In the 40s and 50s, black professionals had to live in the ghetto because you couldn't live with white folk. So our kids had all the role models they needed to see. A poor black boy could live next door to a rich black man. A poor black boy could live next door to a rich white man. Hold on, y'all. Got her. Princessa Gervais, you've been blocked for talking shit. Let's get back to this, okay? Also, we're going to have a gangster rap tax. A gangster rap tax. If you put out music that disrespects or insults black women, if you put out music that glorifies and glamorizes killing other black men, if you put out music that worships European materialism, if you put out music that glamorizes going to jail, your ass is going to pay a 25% income tax. That's right. This don't even include the regular tax because we're going to have a regular black community development tax. No, no, no. Separate, 25% of your album goes back to the black community. You're going to pay for putting out filth, okay? And then as president of black America, I'm going to look into outright banning all gangster rap. I'm banning that shit. Y'all going to have to find something else to do. Because y'all ain't doing nothing but glamorizing the school to prison pipeline. So I'm trying to ban that shit. So y'all better start working on finding another job or become a positive rapper. Remember when hip-hop first started, hip-hop was positive. Hip-hop was about having fun. It's true. You had your gangster element. But every gangster rapper also had another side to his message that was positive and reaffirming, right? Eric B. and Rakim had a little gangster side. They had a little materialism side, but they still had the B side with the positive songs. Y'all ain't got no B side. So you're going to pay a tax for putting out filth in the neighborhood. Y'all ready for my next one? As President Ifa Tunde, every high school in the black community must re implement all of the 12 major industrial building trade programs and every child must graduate with a license. They must graduate from high school with a license or certification in the building trade that they had to pursue. You can still have college prep. You can still have business. You can still have nursing. You can have all the college programs, but every child will graduate licensed licensed to go to work the day after graduation. They'll be licensed as a carpenter, licensed as a plumber, licensed as a cosmetologist, licensed as a mason, licensed as a chef, licensed as a computer networker, licensed as a woodworker, they will licensed as a welder. They will be licensed. And if they graduate and they're not licensed, the principal will be put on probation and he or she will be fired if it happens again. 
Every child graduates, not just with a diploma, but they graduate with a license so they can go to work because we're not going to contribute to another 2 million black folks having master's and doctorate degrees and cannot find work. Every child will graduate with a license or a certification. Number seven, because the black community needs a lot of infrastructure, and because we have a trillion dollar economy, everyone will have to pay a redevelopment tax. And guess what the redevelopment tax is for? The reinvelopment tax is to make sure that every black community in America has a bank, a hospital, a supermarket, and a school. I'm going to say it again. A bank, a hospital, a supermarket, and a school. I'm going to say it again a bank for our economic life, a hospital for our physical life, a school for the educational life, and a supermarket to sustain. Hospital, supermarket, bank, and school, you're going to pay a tax to make sure black folks can get their food from black folks, so they can get their health care from black folks, so they can get their education from black folks, and so they can access wealth to build their businesses from black folks, okay? Number eight, all black celebrities, all black celebrities, if you make a million dollars or more a year, if you make a million dollars or more a year, celebrity or professional, you will pay a tax that goes directly to building credit unions and banks in the black community, okay? You will pay a tax that goes directly to building credit unions and banks in the black community. And every year, every year, we will have a national black awards program to honor those in our community who have done the job of resurrecting African-American people. We're gonna give our best black teacher, best black principal, best black doctor, best black architect, best black therapist, best, 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 best mother, father of the year, mother of the year, grandmother of the year, elder of the year, businessman of the year, inventor of the year, revolutionary of the year, organizer of the year, activist of, of the year, and we're going to honor our people for doing what's right. You don't just ask people to pay a tax, you honor them for helping out. You honor and you show love for those who support the people. Next, number nine, there will be an office of the elderhood. There will be an office of the elderhood. This is an office, okay? The administrator of which I will choose who will see to it that we have offices for elders in every city to make sure our elders are spending their twilight years in the best possible condition. We're going to have a group of doctors who go in and check up on the elders to make sure they doctor of record is taking care of them because black elders catch hell when they don't have people looking out for them. So even if an elder doesn't have a living child, even if an elder doesn't have a living relative, we going to make sure that we take care of our elders. They can pick up the phone and say, I have a complaint. I was yelled at by my doctor today and I didn't appreciate it. We getting on that. Elders say, I got an eviction notice today. I'm 85 years old. They trying to evict me. We taking care of that bill. Elders say, I can't walk out the house, but I need food. Is there anybody I can help? I ain't got no heat. They turn my heat off. We going to take care of our elders and we're going to build some elder communities elder communities where they can come and teach us that wisdom. Why we got black people sitting in old folks home who got a whole life of knowledge, a whole life of wisdom, a whole life of experience that they can teach. And guess what we going to do at the elder communities? We going to bring the young people in. We're going to bring the young people in and they're going to sit their ass down and they're going to listen to what it was like to live in the 60s. They're going to listen to what it was like to live in the 50s because one of the biggest reasons our children are not conscious or conscientious about being loyal to black folk is they don't know the struggle. They don't know the struggle. 
I do evaluations for a living, family. You'd be surprised the amount of children I ask, who was Martin Luther King? They don't know. Who was Malcolm X? They don't know. Who was Harriet Tubman? They don't even know Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman. They don't know about the Freedom Riders. They don't know about the sit-ins. They don't know about the marching and the protests. They don't know about the Black Panthers. They don't know about SNCC and CORE. They don't know Garvey. They don't know Elijah. So we want to make them come and sit at the feet of the elders and get the wisdom. Number 10. As you know or don't know, African people invented over 50% of the parts of the automobile. We invented the self-lubricating engine. We invented the shocks. We invented the transmission. We invented the automatic transmission and the manual transmission. The rubber comes from Africa. The coltan comes from Africa. Many of the minerals come from Africa. And although we've invented so many of the key parts of the automobile, we do not produce an automobile. Do you know how much money black America gives Toyota? Do you know how much money y'all give to Mercedes Benz? Yes. Toyota, Hyundai, Mercedes Benz, Cadillac, and I don't have to mention the damn Hummer. And by the way, the Hummer and the Cadillac truck were designed by black men. Facts. The Hummer and the Cadillac truck is a black invention. We drive all these automobiles. We spend more money on automobiles as a people than any other group, and we don't sell one. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to get all of our engineers together. I'm going to get our black engineers together on a task force. And we're going to pay them because it's going to be their job. They're going to get paid. Everything ain't for free. Okay? I love to do things for free, but I understand everybody don't. So we're going to pay them. And they're going to have to do what? Design an automobile. Black America has its own automobile. And you will pay a tax for buying anything other than the car we make. You want to drive a Maybach? Drive a Maybach, but your ass going to pay as much in taxes as you pay for the Maybach. What is to be done for black people must be done by black people. Okay, so we're going to get a car, and guess what? Once we design that car, we're going to have to build factories. And once we open up the factories to make the car, we're talking about jobs. You know how many unemployed black folks going to be able to get a job making a black car that black people go and drive and put money back into the black community. And the car will be a state-owned car. We're going to control the money of that to make sure we can make sure we work, make sure. And guess what else I'm going to do as president of black America? We haven't had a black college created. I think our oldest, what is our youngest black college? Our youngest black college was created, I think, in the 70s, the 60s, and 70s. The youngest black college. So guess what? We're going to put together a task force to give us 12 new black colleges. Why? Because the current black colleges were designed on a model to teach us how to fit in the white reality. And I support black college, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying, historically, they were created so we could participate in the white reality. I want 12 new unapologetically African Fred Douglas Marcus Garvey universities, not for participation, but for power accumulation. These colleges will be based on making entrepreneurs, revolutionary leaders, and international investors for the people. 12 new HBCUs in black America. That's what we're going to be doing. That's what we're going to be doing. Okay?